One of the main concerns here for blockchain is that when you push something, change of control. And so this includes send. So there's a change of control. We're talking about re-entering code here. One of the concerns with sending, you can't just send the ether. You're also sending control. So the recipient at that point is allowed to take control. They can take over and execute any code that they want to from that point on. They have to give you back control, and then you proceed from there. The problem with this, or the risk with this, is that during the time that they have control, your contract might get into an unexpected situation. So this is actually the thing that we looked at last week. Maybe you're gonna buy something, and then you're gonna send like a royalty payment, then you're gonna send like a second royalty payment, and then you're gonna send money to the seller. Maybe it's a marketplace. So the risk is, if you're using Ether, that you're gonna send Ether to the first person, and then at the time that you're sending it to them, that person changes the royalty percentage from like 5% to like a million percent. And then you come back to your smart contract and then you, you're, you're going in order, A, B, C, D. So that was A, was send Ether to recipient A. And then you send it to recipient B, but all of a sudden, instead of 5%, you're sending a million percent. And then they are just liquidating your entire account. And that's a problem. That's a broad problem. It can happen with a lot of different situations. You could be changing payment amounts. You could be changing. It's not just about changing the payment amount of the tokens. You could be sending a token, but then taking it back. There's a lot of weird stuff you can do that people typically, when they make these contracts, they're not really thinking through all the ways that this could go wrong. So that's a problem. The best practice here is just to not do that in general. Things that are short and simple carry. But for smart contracts, the correct thing we really should be saying is, if you're ever going to perform a message call, then you need to make sure that every other situation that somebody can come into your smart contract is not going to change the situation and the invariance or the preconditions that you were expecting at the time that you executed that message sent. That's, it doesn't even fit in a tweet. Quote me on that. That is the thing you need to do. Another way you could say it is just don't do that at all. It might be dangerous. I audit contracts. You know, I, I read these things top to bottom, left to right. I look for these weird situations. When I see a push payment, I'm thinking, how could I f them? How could I exploit this situation to get somewhere that they didn't expect to get results in me retiring with a billion dollars? That's what I'm thinking. I'm looking at every possible orifice to get in. If you were already thinking that way, then you're going to figure it out and you're going to be safe. That's a level of discipline and creativity that is hard to articulate to people when they're taking a 101 solidity course. And so we just say, don't do that. Let's, uh... Yeah. Hey, William. Daniel, oh. I hope you're doing amazing i see it as a plan for today's schedule is uh, extremely massive so i'm gonna quickly ask william uh, who we're in contact with you about potential interview i did believe that this topic wasn't mentioned uh for the plan today so is it digital identity if i'm not mistaken it was a report by the public about total tokens so i would like to hear your opinion in which direction uh, is it moving? Are you for, against this concept of uh, so-called token or any, or are you believers of uh, any different way how uh, our digital identity will be stored in the blockchain? This is a great question. For soulbound tokens, I have to support it, right? Because a soulbound token is a subset of an ERC-721, of an NFT. So a soulbound token is just a more restricted version of an NFT. And I like NFTs and I might be biased. They're usually good. And so a soulbound token is that. Now a soulbound token, what we're talking about is something that cannot be transferred. Basic definition is it's a token. That means it's not valuable. It's not intrinsically valuable or it's just a number. That is a definition of a token. It's non-fungible. We can think of a fungible yeah, one as well. I think it does. But actually I think soulbound token has to be fungible. Why? Well, what if 
if it's a, a score of some sort. So you could have a bunch of that. Well, let's, let's look up the definition of fungible. Returnable or negotiable in any kind of substitution as a quantity of grain <laughs> equal for grain. Okay, there's a key word here. It's not incompatible. It's about token. Substitution. If you can't transfer it, you can't substitute it. This is original research. I mean, this is we're we're coming up with this stuff on the spot, right? So yeah, it's substitutable in the sense that if I have a score of five, yep. the token that is number three and the token that is number five are substitutable for each other in terms of what they represent, to, you know, to my score. So I'm always thinking for things that apply fifty years or more ago. I'm thinking of a thing where an authority put some type of a no intrinsic value thing directly on people in a way that they couldn't undo it. And it was wherever they went, this thing went. Does anybody know where I'm going with this? It could be any kind of identity. This is before computers. They used it in a bad way. These are bad people. They took people without their consent and they put this thing on them. And those people, wherever they went, this thing was with them. You could say soul bound, people bound or body bound. They, they put this thing on these people as a way to, to, to do something with it. Does anybody know where I'm going with this? Unwillingly. Well, I mean, there's a lot of examples of that. I don't want to say what, it, what I'm thinking because if there's other examples, I want to look at this broadly. I'm not really sure if it's that much unwillingness because if, for example, we dive deeper into the talent's research, like the idea of this soul bond comes from gaming industry world of Wiped out the piece, a big fan off, and uh, actually, the term soul bone comes from some artifacts from some patterns that you can get from the game after defeating some of your enemies. And actually, in this case, it should come as some kind of reward. It's not something that you are unwillingly taking, but that it's something that you receive. And later on, how he explained it, and that's also how I understand it in my use case. Yeah. That, well, I guess where Will is, is going is like, how could it be used in a bad way? No, 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 no. I don't care how we're using it. I just want to study prior art to discuss this. I mean, but there's birth certificates and citizenship. You can get rid of those. We're going with during genocides often. The victims of genocide are forced to wear things that clearly identify them. I'm thinking of Star David here. Right. Yeah. That's the most well-known example. Basically tattoos. I mean, I'm trying to think of... Games are a good example, too. So I'm I don't... very hesitant of any live internet shows that discuss those two topics. We can think of others. We should. Okay. So if you get a tattoo, it's from a specific identity. When you... If I go get a tattoo... You know, the tattoo, that really has intrinsic value. I get it because I like the tattoo. The Star David, it has nothing to do with the star. It has a lot more other meaning than that. Just like the teardrop on your eye. Is it really about the teardrop? Do I like tears? No, it's about, it's about you know, something else. That is really a soulbound token. Tattoos that have extrinsic meaning. Is there a better way to say that? Meaning derived from something else, from without. This is a soulbound token. Whatever definition we come up with or anything that we say has to include these use cases because this is it. Games, just like you said, if your game has an account and you kill a dragon and that's an achievement, so we call achievement badges, is this fungible? I don't know. You can't trade with another. I mean, is it tradable? I don't know. Is a Star of David tradable for another Star of David? I don't, I don't really think that makes sense. Okay. Is your achievement for killing a dragon tradable for someone else's achievement? No. That's stolen valor. Sounds like a good bad name. I'm sure that's a stolen, <laughs> I'm sure that's a bad name. Maybe going too deep into, is it non-fungible? Okay. So what else is a soul bound token? Obviously it's not transferable or. No, it's, that's under debate. Yeah. Because what if you use your wallet, your soul? <laughs> really the definition is soul bound token. If we're going to identify what is a soulbound token, then we need to specify what does the word soulbound mean. Okay, so we've got a definition maybe of, maybe we've got some properties of a soulbound token. It's definitely a token. Oh, and so something about tokens broadly is that we've got 
this is really a study of tokens, but we've got an Entrican's law situation here. This is why we do this. This is why we look at this. You know, this is Aristotle talking. Like, this is why we, we look at the first principles here to see, are these things applicable? And this tells us whether a thing is or is not a thing. So if this is, if a, if a soul bound token is a thing, it's a, if it's an NFT, because it's not transferable, well, that really means that it's an asset of negative or positive value. And this asset, the fact that you own this asset, this thought is only as valid in the trust of the person who has physical control of the asset. Like, what does that mean? The physical control here might be the scarcity or it might be the, like, okay, so if you go to the, if you go to the jail and you get a teardrop on your face and that means you're whatever you did in a gang. Okay, well, if somebody else is just giving out teardrops willy nilly and there's no trust in that system, then there's a breakdown of this connection. Same thing for soul bound tokens. If Harvard gives out degrees to anybody or if anybody can produce a degree and convince other people that it's a Harvard authentic degree, then what are Harvard degrees worth? P.S. A Harvard degree is a soul bound token. Nobody keeps their house warm by burning Harvard degrees, right? So that means that there's no intrinsic value. There's not a lot you can do with paper. You can make paper airplanes, you can burn it, you can smoke it. I don't know what you can do with paper, right? There's not a lot of actual value in the paper. It's an extrinsic, it's value from without. So that is a soul bound token. I also believe that the fact that makes it so special and so let's put it like this unuseful for other people owning your soul bound token is the fact that it actually has some bonds with you. You just had this example with Harvard University, for example. Actually, it's not that thing to buy a Harvard University degree if you can for one ease or whatsoever. If you could change the name, if you could uh, actually make some changes, of course, you would feel pity. Most probably some people would know about it, but still. But the fact about Sobo and NFTs is that actually they have some uh, connection to yourself, whether it will be your personal code, whether it will be your name, whether it will be some other element of your identity that makes it completely worthless for other uh, people to buy, to own, to stole, because it's kind of owned by your soul. Basically, your soul is your name, is your identity. Uh, for other people, it couldn't make any sense. And I do believe that most of this reference that Vitalik had in his uh, paper, that uh, you killing this dragon, get this power, get this uh, artifact, or whatsoever, because you did it. And this artifact, like it's something, <laughs> and this artifact has power only when it's in your hands. That's basically how it works with the soul bone tokens in real life. And um, it's connected to your to your identity because otherwise it's worthless for, for other people. That's something that I believe is in the core of this characteristics of soul bound token. Yeah, these are these are good, these are worth talking about. Um, also I can tell you that this it's fun to talk about these things, but these probably won't get much media attention. Probably won't be used for a lot of things. It's fun to implement these it just there's, there's there's no money in it, which is which is fine. It's a very simple concept. So it's just going to do. It's doing a very specific thing. It's going to attach a degree, a badge, an achievement to a person, and you can do fun things with that. You know, you can these people that have achieved these things, you might invite them to a party. You can give them privileges. That's a cool thing. You know, you you get privileges that can never be taken away. You can use this for ratings. Nobody says that these have to be immutable. Right. So yeah, they can change over time, right? And who would have the authority to change them? thing, yeah. we still haven't talked about, which is like what what's a soul, and how does something on a blockchain connect to a soul? Right, like that's a fundamental thing that I don't I don't see anybody with a clear answer to yet. Like non tradable, sure, but attack vector is just steal somebody's wallet or you give somebody the keys to your wallet and it's over. I don't know because everything has an analog. Mm -hmm. We might think ether's money. Ether's not money, ether's ether. But if you think it's money, then it's money enough. Or you might think that artwork is art, but it's just pixels. You know, is it really a picture or is it just a bag of pixels? If you have an account, is that your account? Do you really own that? Is it really yours? You know, do you have de jure 
control over that? Or is it really just anybody who guesses the private key to your public key owns those tokens? These are kind of like an engineering way of a word for this. It's called quantization error. So, you know, it's, it's close enough. It might be a little bit off, but the system doesn't allow you to articulate well enough. Anybody has this problem if you speak two languages, you know the words. The words make sense. Google Translate says it's there, but there's, there's a nuance. You're missing the nuance. If we're going to talk about a soul-bound token, well, a soul is not, that word doesn't translate into Ethereum. That word makes sense in English. That word does not make sense in Ethereum. So we're going to lose something in translation when we talk about a soul-bound token on a, a blockchain. A soul-bound token was a really important concept that people were going to talk about you know, a lot in school and debate about it. Well, then people are going to, and people do debate, well, what is a soul in a human? Can a soul be moved out of a human? And then, well, we're going to say, well, you know, your Harvard degree is not really a soul-bound token. It's basically stapled to your body. I don't care if you reincarnate as a caterpillar. That caterpillar did not graduate from Harvard. That's really your body. And then people are going to say, well, you know, people can lose their mind. They go into a vegetative state. They come back. There's somebody else, chemotherapy, maybe. And so they're a different person. And Harvard's going to say, shut up. They're keeping the degree. We're not going to revoke a degree because you went into a vegetative state and you came out as a different person. There's a quantization error here where Harvard's just going to say, if you pass this course, I don't care if you change your name. I don't care if you cut off your body. I don't care if you get bionic implants. Basically, whoever has the 90% of your skin is going to have the Harvard degree. We have violated the principle of soul bound. Does it really matter? Actually, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, and uh, don't let me know, as far as I remember, paper, once again, with our paper, actually the issue of the soul bound token has no control of it after the process of issuing, of granting it to you. So basically the way how you can get this access and then it's a perfect question actually what happens if something happens like changes in your life to your wallet if you lose some access or whatsoever. So one thing that I really like about it is that perhaps you might decide on your own how do you want to distribute this access, whether it will be among your 10, 15, or 50 closest people, or it will be among 100 random people that you've met once per life, and uh, you just trust them, uh, you just trust that uh, the majority of votes will be against you, in case you lose your key or whatsoever, but there, but once again, no one actually can check whether you were there for six months or seven months yep. this review is trustworthy or not uh, the beauty of the cell phone if we're talking about there is a cover letter cv achievement etc it's locked doesn't matter whether it was good or bad it's locked there and uh, basically it's publicly available people can see people can see that it's that it's assigned to you to yourself to your work experience but they cannot do anything about it. They cannot change it, um, not delete it. I do believe, as far as I understood, the concepts that uh, in this case is Harvard or Oxford University or whatsoever, and they don't have any access to it because you are in control of choosing who will be this uh, kind of angels yeah. people or something like this. Nikita, what you're saying is basically this is an immutable resume. Maybe that's another way to call this. Maybe these are permanent ratings, badges. So we were thinking about all these things. One of the things specifically that we, we actually wrote it in there as a use case that people should look out for is a negative value asset. It's right there. Loans, burdens, and responsibilities. And this speaks to soul bound tokens because think about it. If, if the intention here was just to have everything has to be tradable, well, a negative value asset, you would drop it like it's hot. That would be a hot potato, right? So you would just give that away. No, we were considering things where you could not trade them, where they were permanently bestowed on you. And that includes negative value assets. That means somebody can give you an F permanently. That can be an immutable resume or report card. So part of this thing that we want to think about is, is this only for good things? Is this only for bad things? Does this only, do we only want to support use case and what is good and bad, right? Is that the recipient, the bestower, you know, do we want these things? 
Think about the China social credit system. China is just a couple years away from China today. Um, basically, you can't travel unless you have a green or yellow code on your phone. And uh, currently, it's based on mostly your COVID test. If somebody from your building tests positive, then you're walking outside, you're green, and then all of a sudden you turn yellow or red, and you have to go home because someone else in your building tested positive. And uh, that's part of zero COVID strategy. Well, this system works identically to if you borrow money and don't give it back, or if you make a bad tweet about something. I'm not here to talk about politics, but I'm saying that when you have irrevocable, immutable resumes, that includes these type of use cases. So if we're talking about soulbound tokens, we're talking about the good and the bad. It's just a tool. We're talking about badges. We're talking about complaints. We're talking about star ratings. Star ratings are soulbound tokens. But I think the good part is that we've, dis- we've explored a lot of different models here on different ways that we can think about this and more thinking we need to do if we're going to make decisions on how this should work. We've got to think through these different things if we're going to build something or we're going to, we're going to make an opinion about this. I'm not sold on whether this is good or bad. I mean, I'm sold that it's possible. I'm sold how we could do it. But do we want these things? Permanent resume, this is incompatible with right to be forgotten. It's incompatible. So... I don't have answers to this. I'm not telling you that right to be forgotten is more important than immutable resumes or vice versa, but these are the discussion points. Hey, uh, Richard Moore has to speak. I don't know if yeah. he has a question. I was just thinking more about the uh, sort of the technical side, the code side of how this works. Could you send an NFT sort of contract that has no ability to uh, delete and NFT, is that how that would work um, for it to be sold down or no transferable function? Um, yeah. So technically, to implement this, it's just ERC-721 with transfer disallowed. I mean, if people are interested in this, I'll just implement this and I'll do it better than OpenSea. I'm not going to, you know, import all that stuff because this is pretty simple. Is this something people are interested to see? Yes. Okay. Yeah, with transfer disallowed, but also there needs to be some like uh, administrative function. Right. So there's general, there's the generic portion, which is kind of like the standardized simple thing. I can explain that, you know, just ERC 721 without transfer, but then Mm -hmm. implementation wise, you might implement this a little different way. Um, There's different ways you can, you can do these things, but in general, the broadest sense, the broad sense is just going to have, you know, metadata JSON, the same as ERC 721. And 1155. 1155 copies of the metadata ideas from 721. They're compatible. So this should be compatible with those. Um, technically, you're just making an NFT that you can't transfer. And then there's some, you know, there's some optimizations you can make with that. Yeah. So there should be administrative functions in a useful implementation. So you have the baseline implementation, and then you have the useful. We call this a mock. So I'll put this, uh, you know, I know how to do this. So um, I will do that. And I will report back here with, with a demo. If anybody wants to see it next time. So basically, in a nutshell, and an amazing question, by the way, uh, from Lawrence, so basically, in a nutshell, it's not really assigned to you, just the same year, C721, certain disabilities, kind of like this. Am I right? What do you mean it's not assigned? I think it is assigned. I mean, like, it just sent to you, it sent to your wallet or your soul or whatsoever, like, in this case, I don't really understand the concept of this soul, if it's just like any other wallet where you got the token, but the thing is that you cannot send it, you cannot sell it later on, just because technically some of these features were disabled. So basically it's the same, absolutely the same NFT token, which was sent to you specifically because someone knew you were so wallet or your soul address or whatsoever and you just cannot do anything with it play wrong because the main features were the same so that's a good point so there's one way you could do this so soul the easiest way is just to disallow sending it to smart contracts you would require that the recipient be an externally owned account so it's not going to be a smart contract i know how to do that um so i will probably implement this, but there's a cop out here. So 
you know, if, if somebody thinks that a smart contract is a soul, then you could badge the smart contract. But then if it's a smart contract, then somebody could transfer ownership of it. And then somebody could just make a transferable NFT out of that. So then the question here is, well, if you send a soul bound token to a contract, is it a soul bound token? Does the benefit accrue to the contract itself or the wrapper, the owner of that, or the beneficial owner? Because people make wrappers. So they, they find smart contracts and they turn it into an NFT so they can list it on OpenSea. Happens all the time. That might be above my pay grade here. This might not be something we should decide when we're building this generally. When we're building it specifically, maybe that's the rule. Maybe the rule is I'm not going to give you an NFT unless it's sold bound token, unless you're an externally owned account, unless you're not a smart contract, unless you can prove you're not a smart contract. And there's a way to do that. Um, quick personal question to you about the RC sales one. Go ahead. I didn't expect you to be that open for people to answer their questions and to be thinking about different topics. I saw that you stick to your agenda. Now I see that that's not the case. And I'll be more than happy to participate in the upcoming discussions as well because I have a lot of questions, a lot of insights to add, to ask, etc. Basically, the last question that I wanted to ask you for today, and as I said, it's a bit personal. Back in 2018, uh, you had your own vision of uh, ERC-721. I don't know how many of you have actually went through all this draft changes, draft discussion, but I went to the blog post, I went to all, I guess it was a couple of thousand messages, possibly, or something like this. Yep. I do believe that it took me uh, four days, four days, like in my free time going through all these messages, discussions about the name, how should it be named, which features should you add, and blah, blah, blah. But the question that I have, you had your own vision when you started pre uh, the proposal, when you started making some first draft changes. Uh, it's been already four years, and the NFT became the word uh, of the year 2021. There is a huge boom around NFT, potentially the first uh, bear market in NFT space upcoming. So the question I have, have you underestimated the space, overestimated the space, or equally estimated it in 2018? Like now in 2022, looking back at what has been done uh, over four years ago, has it already reached the potential or you believe that it will become something bigger or like what is your take about your team that you created what's with like this great question thank you for taking this back to 2018 and the four year birthday is coming up a week from today so the the birthday of the finalization of erc 721 we should celebrate yeah we and we will do that in new york nft nyc uh, i'm going to announce it the night before i'm going to remind people at the vip dinner for NFT NYC in the, I guess it's going to be probably in the Ed, Edison Ballroom. I don't know if they announced that yet, or probably somewhere bigger because there's a lot of people. But um, so yeah, I'm going to tell everybody tomorrow's the birthday. You know, let's go crazy. Thank you for bringing this back, and I appreciate you reading the discussion. There's a lot of discussion. I tried to chronicle a lot of this stuff. I have a website where I've had. It's it's easy to forget where you thought you were going as time moves on. So I try to chronicle contemporaneous notes, notes, interviews from then on this webpage. So I'm going to give this link to you on Twitch. And so you can, you can keep me honest. You can go back to the interviews that I've said back in the day. And these go, these are just some of them. It goes back in the day. So you can go to some of these older interviews and you can see what I was saying then and what I'm saying now. And, you know, check me if I'm lying. I've thought about this too. And there's, there's two specific places I wanted to go to. One of them I have a speech that I give probably once a year, and it's called the 10-year plan. This is the same speech I give at NFT NYC once a year or in Miami, other ones. And I have slides. The slides are public. You can find them. It's basically the 10-year plan of where this is going. And so if we're going to say if we're overestimated or underestimated, you got to look at the original exp expectation of this stuff. The original plan, looking 10 years, is that this is going to become some part like MySQL. 
MySQL is a technology for making databases privately on your web server for stuff. And my thought for NFT, what I don't care if it's ERC721, I don't care if it's ERC1155, I don't care if it's Solana, Tron, none of this matters. I don't care if you're using MySQL with some of these concepts built in. My vision is that we're gonna use these concepts or this technology, either the specific or the general, and we're gonna apply them to commerce. We're gonna apply them to big things. This was my vision. My vision was long-term, quoting the famous, what do you think about the French Revolution? And he was like, too early to tell. If the question was, is, is, is NFT is getting too much attention or not enough? And my answer is still, it's too early to tell. And it's like, well, Will, well, we already on the, we're, Will, th- these things are already on the front pages of all the newspapers and blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, but it, we're bigger than that. We're bigger than the front page. I want to be on the back page. I want to be in the middle of the newspaper. I want to be on the things that people don't even read about. That's called pervasive. So I think we're early in the big picture. In the short term, this is probably on par or slightly more than I was expecting. This is 2021, 2022, 2021 especially. It's probably a little more than I was expecting, but not much. I expected this stuff to be on the front page of newspapers. I expected people to be making a lot of money. When we started this, we were talking millions of dollars. Now we're talking many, many billions of dollars. This is not surprising. I'm surprised that it's the whole front page. I keep these newspaper clippings. I got a nice clipping, you know, where the people NFT is the entire front page of New York Times. That I did not expect. That was way more than I expected. But I do know that there's going to be a frenzy. There's going to be, and if I'm, if you're going to count me on predictions, you know, I'm, I'm telling you that there's another wave. This whole people that are not famous selling things that are that they came up with in the shower for millions and billions of dollars, that's going to end. That there's that's going that's a phase. But people that are famous, that a lot of people subscribe to, whether it's a musician that people listen to on the radio things like that, people that are already famous, selling things and making millions and billions of dollars and then keeping the money themselves and not sharing it with a music label, distribution deal, Spotify, Netflix, with the platforms, that's gonna come. That is something that's currently at the very small level. This is, I'm predicting major growth in this market and I have to because there's not a lot of money or stuff happening in that market. There's not, Justin Bieber is not making hundreds of millions of dollars selling NFTs. I don't care if it's NFTs or whatever, but, you know, authenticated merchandise, let's call it that. But he could, and he should, well, Bieber's got something going on right now, but maybe someone else, you know, could and should be doing this. And it's going to make a lot of sense. These people are used to making money for other people. I'm talking about artists, dancers, musicians, playwrights playwrights anybody know any playwrights script writers ghost writers speech writers people behind the scenes drummers people that are artists that are not really front and center and the way that they share their artwork today is through a lot of middle people through a band that's also through a label that's through a distribution platform that's a lot of that's a lot of layers so i think that's going to change this directly ties into people having self-published media accounts. Self-published media allows people to create their own platforms. Self-published media accounts allows people to publish directly to fans, to followers. So that's, that's something that it happened and there was a rush. There was like the floodgate opened and people wanted this. It used to be 20 years ago, famous people were famous, but you couldn't hear them directly. That changed. Now we have all these places where people can publish and you can hear from them mostly without intermediation. So the next logical step is these is for commerce. These people are going to sell things and you're going to buy them directly. Now, doesn't Square and Shopify, you know, don't they already allow that? Yes. People can sell merch. That's called merch. So, you know, the drummer for a famous band can sell merch. But I think there's always going to be a place in people's hearts for buying things that are not physical. I think there's always gonna be a place for people following an account, buying digital merch, following people in ways that even for virtual virtual signaling or for other reasons that are, 
you're buying a thing and you're making a connection without getting physical merchandise. Because it's not about the merchandise. It's about the virtue signaling. I'm not using that as a negative word. Or about the connection or about the, I'm being the first one who did this. So this is a natural progression. And I think we're right on track for that. So answering your question, what's the, uh, the, the, the industry baby? I'm, I don't want to quote the lyrics, but you know, people that are losers, people that are losers uh, getting on the internet and becoming billionaires, slightly more than I expected. People that are famous having direct commerce of intangible goods to people directly on target. I expected zero, we're at zero. And I'm expecting an inflection point soon. And we're going to have an inflection point soon. Long-term brands, enterprise, I'm expecting slow progress. We are directly on progress with that too. We have some use cases, but these things take 10 years. It takes 10 years to deploy, you know, tokens on a pharmaceutical supply chain. There you go. Yeah. I appreciate your reply a lot. It's really funny to hear about people who are losers, as you refer to them. I'm a bit more concerned about people who are making all this rap posts, actually using some free NFT generators or whatsoever, creating some, some fake hype. Yeah. Cool by accepting money and then actually digging the space with 70 million in their pocket or whatsoever. <laughs> it's really crazy how easy it becomes for people to make money, steal money, and lose money in this space in the last like two years or so. That's really crazy. I absolutely didn't expect that the space is so open minded and swear that now I see that you actually have it in bigger open source education NFTs. Absolutely love it. Uh, we all be more than happy to participate in the next spaces as well because I have so much still to ask you, so much still to share with you. So I'm happy to join you and I wish a productive remaining of the day for all of you. Mm-hmm.